Lanto Sukaliga Brahande Sando Si Grahadesh Lero Sukrata Si Vronde Soprahate Kabahatana Manto Sugadiga Bashila Ko Seprahate Kabanahasi Father, we bless your holy and your righteous name. We magnify you, King of glory, the monarch of the universe. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the manifestation of your grace, the manifestations of your power, the manifestations of your love, the revelation of your mercy. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord, for the works of your hand in our lives. Everlasting Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. There is nothing we enjoy that we can take credit for. There is nothing that we see that we can take the credit for. It is your grace. It is your mercy. It is is your love it is your faithfulness that keeps speaking for us everlasting father we appreciate you great god great god great god we give you the praise we give you the glory for what you do for who you are precious lord we thank you open our eyes oh god to a deeper dimension of your love a deeper dimension of your goodness a deeper dimension of your provision your protection and your promises concerning us let this be an encounter a service that advances accelerates our lives forward in the name of jesus give us a testimony from this encounter Thank you, precious Father, for answers to prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All right, I believe you've got your Bible there. Let's do this. If you've got your Bible, uh, grab it. <laughs> Let's get into God's Word very quickly and receive what the Lord is um, saying to us today. Quickly get your Bibles and let's get into God's word. Sharing on the subject tonight, defeating the assignment of Goliath. 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 Kidabago Sabrahadikasha. All right, I believe we can see this quickly now. Let's get into it. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 4. First Samuel 17, verse 4. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. First Samuel 17, verse 4. It's quite a long read. We'll look at 1 Samuel 17, verse 4, from verse 4 to 11. All right. Let me wait for everyone to get up to speed. All right, quickly, 1 Samuel chapter 17, from 4 to 11. 1 Samuel 17, from verse 4 to 11, and would advance to verse 45 to 51 of that same first Samuel chapter 17. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. The New Living Translation of the Bible. First Samuel 17 from verse 4 to 11. And first Samuel 17 from verse 45 to 51. Reading from the New Living Translation. Then Goliath... A Philistine champion from Gath came out of the Philistine ranks to force the to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet, and his bronze goat of mail weighed one to five pounds, one twenty-five pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor. And he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are all, why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight with me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. In other words, I insult the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and all the Israelites heard this, 
they were terrified and deeply shaken. When Saul and all of Israel heard of the threat of Goliath, they were terrified. When they saw how the man was talking, when they saw the boldness with which he spoke, fear entered them. And let's jump now to verse 45 to 51. Oh, that's in 1 Samuel 17. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and white animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that God, the Lord, rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with a sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone for he had no sword. Then David ran over and put Goliath's sword from its shield. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Glory to God. Here was a man by the name of Goliath who came against God's people, came as a threat against God's people, came to intimidate God's people. He believed so much in his strength. He believed so much in his size. As a matter of fact, it was testified about him that this man was over nine feet tall. And when you do a detailed analysis of Goliath, everything about Goliath was large. Everything about him. His spear, everything, his shield, everything about him was large. And for 40 days, twice a day, 40 days, 40 days, over a month, every day, Goliath was in your face. He was consistent with his strength, consistent with everything that he was saying and doing. Every day, Goliath came against God's people saying the same thing. I will kill you. I will end your testimony. I will put an end to your joy. And you all will know that there is a champion of God. There is a champion in the Philistine camp. And Goliath kept on saying all kinds of things to Israel to taunt them. All kinds of things to intimidate them. And here was what Goliath did. Interestingly, he said, you are bringing all kinds of men. Let's not waste people. Let's not kill too many. Just give me your champion. <laughs> Let's not litter this place with blood. Give me the person that has the, the, the greatest of testimonies of, in battle amongst you. Give me the person you trust the most. Let's not waste. I mean, he said, you are coming to me with all kinds of people. I don't, I, I don't need all this because if I have to go ahead with this, all of these men will die. But give me your champion. Let it be champion versus champion. And Goliath intimidated Israel for so long. And because of the kind of words he was saying, because of the force with which he was saying, because of the testimonies of Goliath that preceded him, because this was the challenge of Israel. Israel kept talking about Goliath's testimonies. They forgot theirs. Israel kept talking about the exploits of Goliath. They forgot theirs. They forgot that they just saw God 
taken them through the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted. Never happened in history that water will divide for people to pass through a dry ground. They forgot their own testimonies. This is the challenge we have many times. We focus on the threat of the devil, what the enemy has succeeded in doing to others, how the enemy has prevailed over others, and we forget how our God has prevailed over all the battles we have been confronted with. We forget our testimony. I'd like to remind us again that for every child of God, you have a testimony. A testimony to boast about. A testimony to flaunt. A testimony to remind the devil that the God you serve fights for you. And Israel kept on talking about the testimony and the express of Goliath. They forgot about their own testimony. Goliath tormented them for 40 days. Consistent in his words. 40 days. Until one day, one young boy stepped out. Ah. And for 40 days, he was threatening them. For 40 days, intimidated the people of God. There are people today who have been faced with the intimidation of Goliath for 40 months. For some, for four years. Goliath is intimidating. You know, you know, caging people with fear. Doing all kinds of things to kill the voice of people. In the name of Jesus, I pray for someone hearing me right now. In any way, the torment of a Goliath, the threat of the enemy has affected your voice, has affected the moves that you make now. You are imprisoned by fear. There are things that you are afraid of doing because of the voices playing in your head, because of the threat of the devil that is confronting you. In the name of Jesus, as this word comes right now, let the spirit of faith take over. In the name of Jesus. Receive the spirit of faith. Receive the spirit of faith. Receive the spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus. That same boldness that came upon David. He did not focus on the size of Goliath. He focused on the size of his God. He didn't focus on the size of the project. He focused on the size of his God. He didn't focus on how others have failed. He focused on the size of his God. May that same spirit of boldness be released upon you tonight. May that same spirit of boldness, that same spirit of faith, that same audacity be released upon you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree that by the hand of God, you will no more stop because of the threat of Goliath. You will no more stop because of the words of Goliath. You will no more stop because of the workings of Goliath. You will no more stop because of the testimonies of Goliath against others. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of faith, the spirit of boldness, a divine or audacity is released upon you today in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of faith came upon David not minding if others that were older than him were intimidated by this man's story not minding if others who were older than him were intimidated by this man's size and by the weapons of war that he came with and David stepped out and through that young boy called David, God brought a threat. All that God is looking for. It's not your size. It's not your strength. It's your availability. Uh, will you just release yourself to God? Will you just believe that through you, God will do it? God will do it. I don't know what that thing is. Will you just believe that through you, God will make it happen? Will you just believe? Will you just believe that if I step out in faith and I act on the word of God, if I do my part, God will do his part. You just have to believe. You just have to believe that when I step out, God will not leave me alone. When I step out and I make my boast in my God, when I step out and I fix my gaze on my Lord, God will not leave me alone. This was the boldness, the audacity, the focus of David. And David stepped out. David stepped out. And through David, God brought the end to the threat of the enemy. Please, I'd like us to get out some powerful lessons from the story quickly now you know I, I, I call them personal lessons from the Bible from our Bible passage personal lessons from 1st Samuel chapter 17 4 to 11 1st Samuel 17 45 to 51 personal lesson the first number one giants can fall giants can be defeated it doesn't matter their size 
It doesn't matter the, 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 the strength of their threat. Giants can fall. You know, giants can fall. You see, something the Lord told me while preparing for this. He said, whoever does not draw his strength from me can be defeated by my children. Whoever does not draw his strength from God can be defeated. Giants can fall. Giants can be defeated. Whoever does not draw his strength from God should not intimidate you. Whoever does not make the boss in the living God should not make you intimidated. Whoever does not make God the source does not have the upper hand against you. Whoever does not fix their case on the testimony of Jesus cannot put an end to your joy and happiness. Giants can fall. I like this to, to stay in your consciousness. No matter who they say they are, remind them giants can be defeated. Giants can fall. Whoever does not make God his source can, can, can be defeated like a child. Giants can fall. But you see now, I like us to understand this, that giants come in different forms. Giants come in different forms. Giants come in different shapes. Giants come in different sizes. Giants are major oppositions you face. Major. They are oppositions and they are major oppositions. Giants come in sizes. Giants can be physical. Giants can be emotional. Giants can be mental, psychological. There are many people today, what is fighting you is the smallness of your mind. The enemy is, 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 is he, he has attacked your capacity to see the way God wants you to see. Now, because of the smallness of your mind, you are living a small life. You talk like a loser. You talk like somebody that cannot succeed in anything. Now, the problem is not outside. The problem is inside. It's inside. It's inside. There has to be a deliverance of the mind. There has to be a liberation of the mind. Many are looking for deliverance outside. Looking for somebody who will make some dramatic display with their bodies. Meanwhile, the real devil is inside. The real limitation. The enemy is, 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 is attacking the mind of the people to doubt their testimony in God, to keep them small, to believe they are under a spell, to believe that their salvation is not enough, to believe that they are calling on the name of Jesus is not enough. No, their mind is under attack. While the person is looking outside, looking for the devil outside, the real attack is inside. We see very clearly from scriptures. How the almighty God had, he had deflated the terror of Egypt. The almighty God had, had reduced the, the, the forces of Egypt. Reduced them to zero. Now, the enemy outside had been defeated. But you see, there was an enemy inside. It was not Pharaoh that prevented God's children from accessing the promised land. It was the enemy inside. For many, there's something that needs to leave you. you. The way you think, your thought pattern, the way you see things, the way you see God, the way you study the word of God, the way you pray. Most importantly, many of us, the major problem of our life is the way we pray. There's an understanding that we, we, we have picked about prayer that is not of the word of God. It is not of God. It's not rooted in scripture. So we approach God like some diabolic force that you have to appease. You have to do certain things to wrestle something from his hand. We have not come to understand that real effective prayer must be on the platform of love. You are communicating. You are talking to your father. It's a relationship. It's not a battle where you are trying to, you are trying to wrestle something from his hand. So you have to do certain things. You have until a, the, the, the right understanding of our work with God, our understanding of God, our relationship with God, until we get it right, there are many things we may never, never step into. While we are blaming the enemy outside, not knowing that the real enemy is inside. How we see God. How we see his word. So I said the first thing, Goliath, giants can fall rather. Giants can fall. Giants can be defeated. And number two, lesson we see from this scripture. 
faith in God is our greatest weapon in life. Faith in God is our greatest weapon in life. Our faith in God. Because our faith in God is a testimony of our confidence in Him. Our faith in God is a testimony of our confidence. I have confidence in this God. I believe Him. No matter what anyone is saying, I believe this God. No matter what the doctors have said, I believe this God. No matter what my family has labeled me, I believe this God. No matter what anybody has called me, I believe this God. But this is important now. Faith in God holds on to a word from God. So you don't just say, I believe God. There's no word you are holding on to. There is nothing about God that you have caught. And I mean, it, it, you are inseparable with that truth. Faith in God holds on to a word from God. Faith in God holds on to a revelation in God. Faith in God holds on to a discovery in God. Our faith in God is our greatest weapon. You must understand this. How did David confront Goliath? It was faith in God. He said, today you will know that this is the Lord's battle. Now, God was not there physically. It was okay. You see that size? That almighty God is with us. No. Somebody held on to a word. We need to become this aggressive in our work of faith. Holding on to a word. It, it becomes so real to you. That the way you are making your boast, people think you've lost your mind. Now, the doctor can say you don't have a womb, for example. And the way you are making your boast, they say, we need to evaluate this person. No, it's a word you have caught from God. It's a revelation you've caught in God. Oh, they say this one cannot rise beyond this height. Cannot succeed. Now, the way you are now making your boast in God, it, it, it should call for observation. Because how can a 99-year-old man believe that he will have a child? They should send him to a hospital to check him. Now, holding on to a word. Holding on. Abraham believed that what God has said, God can do. What God has said will not return to him void. He held on to faith in God. Holds on to a word from God. Faith in God holds on. So don't tell me that you are walking by faith. What is the word you are holding on to? Don't tell me I'm living a life of faith. What is the word you are holding on to? Faith in God holds on to a word from God. Holds on to a revelation in God. It holds on firmly to a discovery in God. Faith in God. Faith in God. Number three, lesson we see from this Bible passage. Let's see how we can run through this. Now there's so much to share with you. I want to believe that God is speaking to you. You're getting something. You're being fed properly. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number three, you must act on what you believe to have a testimony of your belief. You must act on what you believe to have a testimony of your belief. If you believe that God can do this, act on it. David believed that God will come through for them. So he ran towards Goliath. You must act on what you believe. Stop talking. Start acting. This thing must not just end with speech. You are just there waiting. Me, God will do it one day. God will do it. No. Act on what you believe. You must act on what you believe. Take steps. Take actions. Dare God. Put your faith to work. Let your faith be in motion. <laughs> and the woman said, If I but touch. Now, she didn't stop there. Now, there was faith. Now, she acted and she had a testimony of her belief. If I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Now, now that's a belief that someone has. But imagine if she stopped at that, at, at that place. And she touched. The reason many of you hearing me now are not stepping to the miraculous, seeing God in different dimensions in the supernatural. You are not acting. You are just talking it, talking. You are writing, writing. You've been writing since January. You've not acted on it. You've been documenting it now. Your note is full of sermons. When will you act on it? Oh, 
I believe what the pastor is saying. That's my word. When will you act on it? When will you put this word to work? This revelation is not for documentation. It's for practice. You are not writing an exam to submit somewhere. So you are writing all the sermons. So that by December 31st, you submit your notebook to God. No. You are receiving empowerment for living. An empowerment for practice. It's not just for documentation. It's for demonstration. You are to act on it. Not just to document it. You must act on what you believe. To have a testimony of your belief. You must act on what you have received. You must act on what you have discovered. So your levels can change. So your season can change. Otherwise, you will just be writing sermons and writing and writing. And after many years, you look at your life. It's still at that same spot. You must act, act, act on what you have received. So you can, you also, you also can have a testimony of your belief that I heard this from God. As my man of God was preaching, I received this word. I knew it was God that was speaking through him. And I began to act on it. Now, here is my testimony that this thing works. Here is my testimony that this thing works. Here is my testimony that God answers. Here is my testimony that God is alive. You must act on what you believe. You must act on what you have received. To have a testimony of your belief. Number four. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Are you receiving something tonight? Glory to God. Number four. Before the battle comes, believe that you have what it takes to win. <laughs> Before the battle comes, even before the confrontation comes, what does this mean? Leave battle ready. Not intimidated and sweating on the bed. You can't sleep. You can't eat because of the threat of one useless Goliath. Before the battle comes, believe, keep saying it every day, I have what it takes to win. There is no battle that can drown my voice. Live a life that is battle ready. Now, David had no space to go and rehearse. Here was Goliath. This guy lived battle ready. He lived battle ready. As you spend time praying daily, for those who don't pray, it's when Goliath comes, you are not trying to pray. <laughs> Live battle ready. Because when Goliath comes, he won't give you space to go and pray. Live battle ready. For those who only pray when they come to church, <laughs> Goliath will not meet you in church. <laughs> Live battle ready. Live battle ready. Such that you know that you have what it takes to win. You won't study the word of God. You won't read the Bible. You just carry a Bible. You put it on your television set or the cabinet or somewhere on the shelf. Only when you are going to church on Sunday morning, you dust it and clean it up nicely. You bring it to church and you look so spiritual within the four corners of the church. You return back home and your Bible returns back to its colleagues on the shelf waiting till next Sunday when the boss will take him or take it back. Leave battle ready. Ha. Goliath won't give you space. Leave battle ready. Keep studying God's word. Keep speaking God's word. Keep acting on God's word. Keep spending time in the place of prayer. Keep not showing your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because when Goliath, you, Goliath comes, you start running from hell task. You know, um, from one spot to another spot, helter skelter, looking for who to call, looking for who to pray with you. Leave battle ready. Leave battle ready. Spend your time daily in the place of prayer. Cultivate a healthy walk with your father. Leave battle ready. Before the battle comes, believe that you have what it takes to win. Number five, very quickly now, lessons from this Bible passage. Your oppositions, your giants won't leave you alone until you have the courage to fight. <laughs> your giant won't leave you. Goliath does not go until they confront him. The man was there 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. Twice a day. 
breakfast and dinner. 40 days. Goliath does not get tired until he's challenged. Goliath does not relocate until he's displaced. Your oppositions, that challenge, will not leave until you have the courage to fight. Don't say after a while I'll be fine. No, problems don't go after a while. They go after a fight. Your oppositions won't leave until you have the courage. That limitation, that challenge you are going through, you are struggling to pray. <laughs> the Lord is telling you, spend time to pray. You are struggling. The Lord is telling you, take out time, study my word. You are struggling. The Lord has told you several times, take up a seed. Go and sow a seed. You are struggling. <laughs> Oppositions don't go until you have the courage to obey God. Oppositions don't go until you have the courage to fight, to dare and act on God's word. Oppositions don't go. Oppositions don't go. Oppositions don't go. Your giants won't leave. They will keep tormenting. Goliath continued until David arose. The guy went nowhere. He, he, he has nothing to return to. The enemy is fighting you. They have nothing, nothing to lose. Nothing. They are already defeated. They, ju they just want to make a mess of your life. They know what you carry. They know the grace of God upon your life. They know the power of God at work on your life. They want to do everything to, 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 to terminate your testimony. But you that carry the glory, you don't know the weight of what you carry. You that carry the destiny, you don't know the weight of what's on your head. Oppositions won't leave until you have the courage to stand up, to, to arise, to fight, to take God serious. The pattern may continue until you have the courage to fight. Your voice may remain silent until you have the courage to fight. Goliath does not leave until he is challenged. They will keep tormenting. They will keep tormenting. And the beautiful part that you and I enjoy in God, we have several weapons to fight with. We've got prayer. We've got sacrificial giving. We've got worship. We've got the word of God. We've got kingdom system. For example, obeying God's word, submission to the ways of God, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. We've got weapons to fight with. But listen, Goliath does not go until he's challenged. Quick now, let me show you something else now. What you must know about Goliath. Quickly now. Goliath sows the seed of fear. Goliath sows the seed of fear. Goliath came to their territory to intimidate them. He sows the seed of fear. And you see, fear creates the platform for defeat. Fear creates a platform. The moment you start living in fear, you have opened a door to the enemy. See what fear does? Fear doubts what God can do and believes more in what the devil has said. Fear doubts what God can do and believes more in what the enemy is saying. It's not, fear creates a platform for the enemy to reign. Fear creates a platform for the enemy to rule. Fear actually is you doubting what God can do and believing more on what the enemy is saying. You see, flip it the other way, what is faith? Faith is you believing in what God can do and doubting what the enemy is saying. You believe more in what God has said and you doubt what the enemy is showing. Now, you are holding on to what is not visible to others and you are doubting what is staring you at the face. Faith, believing more in what God can do and doubting what the enemy is displaying. But what is fear? Fear is doubting what God can do and believing more on the threat of the enemy. So fear creates a platform. So the assignment of Goliath is to sow the seed of fear. Follow me closely. I'm going to bring this all together very soon. The assignment of Goliath is to sow the seed of fear. To sow the seed of fear. Number two, another you must understand about Goliath. Goliath wants you to forget your strength. 
Goliath wants you to forget your strength. Every child of God has an advantage. Every child of God. Whether you have a title before your name or after your name, whatever it is. Whether you gave your life to Christ 10 years ago, 10 days ago, 10 hours ago, 10 minutes ago. Every child of God has an advantage. You are more than conquerors. You have the Holy Spirit. You've got prayer. You've got the word of God. Israel for God that has strength was, you know, God's covenant with them. Goliath wants you to forget your strength. As Goliath was speaking for the 40 days he was speaking, Israel forgot about their strength. They forgot that what they had was mightier. Goliath was too small to stand before what they have. Goliath wants you to forget your strength. Many believers today, when the threat of the enemy comes, we forget our strength. We start, you know, running helter skelter, afraid, doubting what God can do, believing more what the devil is saying. Goliath wants you to forget your strength. Number three, very importantly, Goliath comes to attack your testimonies. Goliath comes to attack your testimonies. He comes to mock you. Now, you got a testimony the other day. Now, there's another threat of the devil staring you in the face with a desire to mock your testimony. Now, Israel had experienced God bringing them out of Egypt. They've experienced the mighty manifestations of God. The news about Israel had gone around neighboring nations, neighboring territories to say, these are a people of God. That was when Goliath came to attack their testimonies, to mock their testimonies, to put an end to their joy, to put an end to their rejoicing. It's an assignment of Goliath. This is a point for prayer. That as you pray, whatever is assigned to attack my testimony, whatever is on assignment to attack my joy, to put an end to my honor, it is, is a manifestation of Goliath. There is something to pray about. Even as God's word is coming out, for those who are discerning, there are prayer points to write. There are prayer points to write. Whatever is sowing the seed of fear, everything that is is at at the the, the 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 that is strengthening the voice of fear against my life you attack it in prayer you address it in prayer whatever is on assignment to make me forget my strength to make me forget my advantage in god it's, these are times to you know as the spirit of god is speaking right now you you get out things to start addressing the place of prayer this is how you expand well, beyond just what the man of God is saying, A, B, C, you are picking what God is showing. I may just be giving power lessons. You are picking prayer points also. This is how to mature in the things of the Spirit. That you don't just wait for prayer point number one, then you wait, pastor say, raise hand, that's when you raise hand. Pastor say, that's, no. As you receive God's word, you are receiving what the Spirit of God is saying to you on a personal capacity. Glory to Jesus. Number four, Goliath makes you forget God's promises concerning you. Goliath makes you forget God's promise concerning you. No matter what you face in life, there is God's promise that covers that area. We have one blanket promise of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Goliath wants you to forget God's promises. So you are going through something. You say, ah, I'm going through this all by myself. Who said you are all by yourself? I'm the only one in this world. I'm the only one in this country. This is my marriage. Nobody understands what I'm going through. It's only me. Who told you you are alone? Goliath wants you to forget God's promises concerning you. So the more you keep speaking like that, the more alone you feel. The more alone you feel. And when you start feeling like that, you open a platform for fear. You open a platform for the works of darkness. Goliath wants you to forget God's promises concerning you. And number five, very quickly now. <clears throat> Goliath aims to fill your heart with his presence and his threat. It's the assignment of Goliath to fill your heart with his presence and his threat. That's why for 40 days he was in their face. So as they sleep, it is him they will see. As they think, it is him they will see. Goliath was giving them something to meditate about. Understand this now. He was giving them something to meditate about. When the enemy starts filling your thoughts with negative things to meditate about, that's an assignment of Goliath. Now, all you keep thinking about is how things will not work. 
All you keep thinking about is how the business will not succeed, how the marriage will soon fail. Now, that's the assignment of Goliath. He is giving you something to think about. He is filling your thoughts with his presence and his strength. It's the assignment of Goliath. And very importantly, Goliath has a mouth. <laughs> Goliath has a mouth. Goliath has a mouth. You need to understand that Goliath has a mouth. Goliath means Goliath rather main activity against God's people, if you understand, was through his words, through his opinions, through his thoughts, through his pressures. See how it works now. Through his pressure, through his thoughts, through his words, through his accusation. Goliath has a mouth. He has a mouth. And you see, there are people who give expression to Satan's hatred for others. They give expression with what they say. They speak words that don't heal. They speak words that hurt. They speak words that depress. They speak words that don't build. They speak words that destroy. It is the ministry of Goliath. Goliath has a mouth. His words are destructive. Goliath has a mouth. His words don't build faith. Goliath has a mouth. His words are determined to make you lose faith in God. Goliath uses words to destroy. But listen now, this is why I'm bringing this together now. Defeating the assignment of Goliath. It is very important that you understand that lips don't speak. Yeah. Lips don't speak. Lips gives expression to speech. Yes. Lips give expression to speech. It comes from inside. As the lips move, it is giving expression to something coming from inside. Follow me closely. Lips give expression to speech. Lips give expression to love. Lips give expression to hate. It is not the lips that hate. It is not the lips that love. What the person is saying is an expression of what is inside. How the person is reacting is an expression of what is coming from inside. Lips don't speak. Lips give expression to speech. Yeah. It gives expression to speech. Lips give expression to thought. Lips give expression to love. Why is all of this important? There is how Goliath thinks that makes him talk the way he talks. There is how Goliath thinks. There is a way Goliath thinks that makes him boast the way he boasts. Mm, yeah. Lips don't talk. Lips give expression to speech. Lips give expression to hate. There is a thinking pattern of Goliath that makes him threaten the armies of the living God. There is a mindset that drives Goliath that makes him ignore the testimonies of the living God. There is a mindset that drives Goliath that makes him threaten the people of God. There is a mindset. 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 And now you see now. This is the point. David understood that there is a mindset. David understood that what Goliath was saying and what Goliath was doing was not just the lips talking. There was a mindset. And that's why David said, <laughs> I won't just attack your hands. I won't attack your legs. I will attack your head, the mind. <laughs> he said, today I will cut off your head. There is something that is driving this expression. There is something that is making Goliath talk like this. There is a thought pattern that is making Goliath express himself like this. There is something that is driving Goliath that is making him boast like this. So my focus will not just be his words. My focus will be on the head of Goliath. What is the head of Goliath? It is a belief system. What is the head of Goliath? It is a knowledge that is not in alignment with the word of God. And that's what the devil is using today. To take advantage of a generation, a belief system, the ministry and the assignment of Goliath 
a belief system that is not in alignment with the word of God. A belief system. It's all over the media. A belief system. Coming from strange altars under the toga of churches. A belief system. Coming from people who are now arguing the word of God on a very carnal level. A belief system. It is the ministry of Goliath. And David said, if we must put an end to this threat, let's attack the belief system. Let's cut off the head. If we must put an end to this threat, is the problem is not his hand. The problem is not the legs. When you focus on those things, you cannot change anything. Let's focus on the belief system. Why is this important now to you? If you must put an end to the threat and the assignment of Goliath against you, you must work on your belief system, what you believe. Your belief system. The problem is with the head. The problem is not the size of the spear. <laughs> the size of the shield. No. The problem is with the head. The belief system. The belief system. The belief system. Quickly now, let me drop this for another two minutes and I think we'll be done so I can make all of this come together finally. The belief system. So how do we defeat Goliath? Understanding all of this that I've shared, how do we defeat Goliath? Quickly now. First, you need to know what God has said. You need to know what God has said. You need to know what God has said. You need to know. David knew what God has said. He was able to confront Goliath. Number two, remind yourself always what God has done. Remind now. Now you're working on the belief system now. The belief system. Remind yourself always what God has done. Remind yourself always. You have a testimony. Even if it's not your personal testimony, you have seen what God has done. He is the God of the Bible. We have read about him. We have discovered him. Remind yourself what God has done. Number three. Reply anything that does not glorify God. Anything that does not submit to God's authority. Anything that does not glorify God. Reply them with God's word. Reply them in prayer. Reply them with what you know about God. Reply them with God's promise concerning you. Don't close your mouth. You don't close your mouth when Goliath is speaking. Bible showed us as Goliath spoke, David spoke. You don't close your mouth. Goliath does not keep quiet after a while. Goliath keeps quiet after a reply. Reply anything that does not glorify God in your body. Anything that does not glorify God in your home, in the life of your children. Anything that does not submit to God's authority. One of the manifestations we see, God has said move forward. And one force of hell is saying, stand on one spot. Remain stagnant in business. Now, that force is refusing to submit to God's authority. Reply that power. Reply that force. Contend with that opposition. Reply anything that does not glorify God or submit to God's authority. And finally, number four. How do we defeat Goliath? Go after the head of Goliath. The belief system. The belief system. The thought pattern. The belief system, the expression that is coming, cut off the head, cut off the head by what you know, by the reply you are given, by the corrections you are given. There are people that you find at your office space. They are giving expression to the, to the words of Goliath. They are giving expression to the thoughts of Goliath. Don't keep quiet. Go after the head of Goliath. Change the impression. You have a testimony of your God. Don't keep quiet. The challenge we have today is that many times unbelievers are talking. Christians keep quiet. Unbelievers are more convinced about what they don't know. Christians lack confidence in what, they, in what God is saying. Don't keep quiet. It's not a sign of self-respect. Because that's what many of us do. Say you must respect yourself. There must be a place of decorum. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You can't keep quiet about a God you've experienced. You can't keep quiet about a God you've encountered. You cannot keep quiet. You're in a business meeting, a business setup. And somebody is talking down on Christianity, speaking against your God. And he's like, bah, let me keep quiet. I came here just for business. No, no. Go after the head of Goliath. You are not attacking a person. You are attacking a belief system. You are not attacking an individual. You are correcting an impression. You are shining the light on God's word before the people. You are letting the people know that this God that you call on, you don't just call on him because others do. You call on him because you know him. You call on him because you have encountered him. 
And this is it, dear friends. To defeat Goliath, you need to know what God has said. Remind yourself always what God has done. Reply anything that does not glorify God or submit to God's authority. And number four, go after the head of Goliath. This is how to defeat the assignment of Goliath. I want to believe that God has spoken to us today. Could you just lift your voice where you are and begin to appreciate God? For this you have received. Open your mouth and talk to him right now. Come on, come on, come on. Kebaka shatalahasi. Lirosa tu kabalasiana bahantish. Le flete cobra gadazia capraga de santo cradis. Le fratina zozo la tabra gadasa yandas. Mantosa li crada gajon telegrasi. Le braga da bayashida gahasa. Come and say this after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for the empowerment that comes only by your word. Say, Jesus, thank you for your empowerment that comes only by your word. Say, Father, thank you for opening my eyes today. Say, Lord, tonight, I believe that your power is at work in me. I believe that your grace is rich towards me. Say, in the name of Jesus, from today, I am winning over every form of Goliath against me. Say from today, I am prevailing over every manifestation of Goliath against me. Say from today, I will cut off the head of Goliath using the word of God as my weapon. Come on, say it again. Say, from today, I will cut off the head of Goliath using the word of God as my weapon. Say, from today, I will cut off the head of Goliath using the word of God as my weapon. Could you open your mouth and just turn that to prayer? Every manifestation of Goliath, every expression of Goliath, I am winning against them. Using the word of God as my weapon from today, like I've never done before. Engaging the word of God, replying with the word of God. Activating the word of God in every dimension. Placing my strength on God's word. Making my boast in God's word. I cut off the head of Goliath. I put an end to the reign of Goliath. I confront the threat of Goliath. Using the word of God as my weapon and my strength. Goliath will not swallow my voice. Goliath will not succeed in sowing the seed of fear to dominate me. I will not forget my strength because of the works of Goliath. Because of the words of Goliath. Because of the pressures, the threat, the accusations of Goliath. I will stand on God's word. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Father, we thank you today. We bless you for your word we have received. Thank you for your light that has come to us today. Lord, we arise in boldness. We arise in faith. Defeating the assignment of Goliath. In the name of Jesus. Rising above the threat of the devil. Rising above the, the accusations, the pressure, the words of the enemy against us. We triumph on every side in the name of Jesus. Just like David had. We also from today we share testimonies of how we conquer the giants. How we conquer the oppositions. How we conquer the giants. How we put an end to their reign. How we put an end to their threats. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for testimonies on every side. Thank you for the impartation of grace and of strength. Thank you, Father, for a new season that just got activated right now. Thank you, precious Lord. Your word continually produces in our life. Your word continually prospers in all that concerns us. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Be inspired and empowered to live a very fruitful and victorious life as you get the highly anointed books written by Dr. Sule Emanuel. 
To order for copies of these Destiny Empowerment books, including Power to Excel audio and video messages, contact the Bookshop and Resource Center of Omega Phi Ministry Johannesburg, Number 1 Hardy Street, Corner Cornelia Street, Marshalltown, Johannesburg, South Africa. To order copies of all our books and MP3 audio messages online, we also invite you to visit our websites on www.powertoexcel.tv or www.suleimanuel.com. We also have the electronic version of all our books on our websites. No matter where you are in the world, we can have our products delivered to your doorstep. There is a book by Dr. Sule Emanuel that can speak to every area of your life. Buy them. Eat them. Experience a better life and better results. Thank you for joining Dr. Sule Emanuel on today's episode of Power to Excel. We look forward to another inspiring moment with you next time. You can send an email directly to Dr. Sule Emanuel on info at suleemanuel.com. Till we come your way again, always remember, no matter what anyone is saying against you, so long they are not God, their words will not stand. God bless you.